Good morning. It's been a while. <laughs> okay, so today I thought I would just do a, hopefully a quick video on what we will be using for the upcoming school year, uh, 2020 through 2021. Okay, so this year my oldest will be in 10th grade and then my youngest will be in 7th grade. So that's what I'll be showing you today. Um, okay, so we were actually going to start school today, but my parents um, called and they wanted to have my girls for a week. You know, since we moved, we don't see them as often as we used to. So my parents have the girls this week. So what we did instead is we kind of did a soft start to school last week. Um, my oldest, or sorry, my youngest, she did, uh, she did about two language lessons every day and she did uh, several science, les science lessons and I think that's all that she has done. And then my oldest did some language. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I guess officially we'll start next week, which would be what, the 17th maybe? Okay, so first of all, I'll just tell you what they're doing together and then I'll tell you what my 10th grader is doing and then my seventh grader. Okay, so together they are doing the Good and the Beautiful History um, year one. And I'm sure you're tired of seeing this because I'm tired of seeing it. <laughs> I really am. It's all over YouTube. Um, but we have been using the Good and Beautiful language arts for, this will be our fourth year now. I'm thinking. Yes. Yeah, this will be our fourth year of using the Good and Beautiful language arts. And we absolutely love it. Um, they have learned so much and it's really surprising just how they can learn so much when it's fun and it's beautiful, um, <clears throat> but they have learned so much. And, <clears throat> excuse me, anyway, so um, I've looked into this, you know, off and on over the years, but I was always like, uh, I don't know, but I decided to go ahead and try it because we tried the Beautiful Feet history last year and we didn't like it. Um, the two years prior to the Beautiful Feet, we did Simply Charlotte Mason history and we loved it, absolutely loved it, but I didn't have any proof, any paperwork, because it was just reading and narrating, and anyway, so that was the downfall of that. So we tried the Beautiful Feet last year, that way we could still read and enjoy that, but there'd be some kind of proof, and that didn't work out at all. It was just, it took entirely too long. I mean, it it was insane how, how long it took. Um, so... I decided that this might be like a medium balance. You know, we can still enjoy the reading and still have some proof, but it shouldn't be as much as the beautiful feet was. So we're going to try it. Okay. Um, so they are both doing this. This is the course book. It's a teacher's book. This is the keys to history. It's a game. Uh, this is the big book of history stories. It has a lot of pictures. And then of, of course it has stories. I think they're in the front. Okay. Um, now, to go with this curriculum, there are audio recordings on the website, and then the course book, well, the history, it covers four, it has four units, so it covers four time periods, and for each unit, you need one read aloud, so the ones that we chose, the first one we chose, it's called The Cat of Bubastes, I don't know if I'm saying that right, um, but I don't have it to show you because it's an audio book, so it is on the phone. The second book for Unit 2, I believe, that we chose is a Huguenot Garden. And then we chose the Revolutionary Swamp Fox. We learned about him last year or the year before, Mary and the Swamp Fox. And my oldest absolutely, really just, just loved him. So there we get a story, an extra story to go with him. And then also Children of the Storm. So... Anyway, all right, so that's history. Oh, I guess I'll show you. So, um, so each grade level, let's see, since the Good and Beautiful History is, you know, spans all grade levels, K through 12, um, to give an extra additional work and, you know, increased challenge depending on their grade level and age and all that, um, what's her name? Jenny Phillips, the owner. The author, creator, all that. 
Um, she has made these student explorers. So this one is for grades 10 through 12, and this is for the whole year for my 10th grader. So these are just basically um, additional work, additional reading, proof, <laughs> paperwork, um, questions, things like that to go with it. And they're more challenging as well. So um, like each unit has projects. So they are to pick at least one of the projects to do for each quarter or e each unit. Anyhow, um, some of them look pretty, cha well, some of the projects look pretty challenging, uh, but they're like, you gotta research, you gotta write, there's essays on here, things like that. So, um, but that is my 10th grader. My 7th grader, she also has the history binder and she has her student explorer as well. And hers is for grades seven through nine. And there's maps to go with it. Um, just like the oldest, there's reading to go with it. Um, let's see, there's projects you gotta do, more maps. Anyhow, oh, don't wanna get that out of order. Okay, so for their language and their history and their science, they will have these three ring binders. So, all right, that's what they are doing together. All right, so for math, my 10th grader, she will be doing geometry this year. So what we're gonna do is she's going to be using easy peasy geometry. And everything I'm mentioning, I will try to leave a link in the description box below. And if I have already made a video about any of this stuff, I will also leave a link to the video in the description box. Okay? All right. So she'll be doing easy peasy geometry. And in addition to that, I picked this book up, The World of Mathematics by John Tyner. Um, I think it's just, it just sounds like it's the history of math. Um, throughout the world. So, I don't know. Anyhow, I'm not, I don't want to get into too much of this stuff right now, but, um, you know, I may do a video on this at another time, but I figured I would just read this, you know, to both of them just to kind of see what it is. I thought it might be interesting. So, for her science, she will be doing Chemistry 101. This is from the 101 DVD series. And there's no actual textbook. The textbook, I guess you could say, is actually videos. And there is a guidebook with quizzes um, to go with the videos. Okay. And then to make this into a high school, one year high school uh, credit course, it has to have a lab. So the course, course accreditation program will it has the lab work in it. So it'll, I think it says about 30 hours of lab work. And in addition to that, I am adding in this book, Exploring the World of Chemistry by John Tyner. Um, okay, so it's just a black and white uh, book of, about chemistry. So I don't know, I just thought it might be something nice to add in. Um, so if you're interested in seeing the Chemistry 101, um, until I get a video made on that, which it may not be until next year, but or the end of the school year. Um, if you just want to see how it's laid out, I have made a video on Biology 101. The same setup. I mean, it's it's honestly, it's the same three-piece setup and layout. So if you're interested, interested in seeing Chemistry 101 and you can't find a video on it, um, you can see my link down below to the video on Biology 101 because she did that last year and I go through it and show you what it looks like and it's laid out the same. Um, she absolutely loved Biology 101 last year so we're continuing with Chemistry 101 and she did. She learned a lot and she really enjoyed it. Um, anyhow, so there's that. Oh, still on my 10th grader. Okay, so for language, um, last year she did, she continued in the Good and Beautiful Language Arts High School 1. So she will be continuing um, the same, but 
uh, high school too. Okay, so it just has these these units, these little booklets. Okay, and there's ten booklets in each high school level. She just works through them. Okay, and again, I did I did a video on high school one, so that video will be down below, and. High school two is laid out the exact same as high school one. So she had this this last year. It's the grammar and writing guide. And she will use this all throughout. She'll use the same book all throughout her high school language years if she uses the good and beautiful. Um, these cards, these are just uh, flash cards for poetry, um, states, rivers, um, just geography flashcard type things. And then to go with the high school two, she also has some books to read. This one is the Christoph Van, oh, sorry, the Christoph Von Schmid collection. And she has Harriet, the Moses of her people, Men of Iron, Sagebrush Surgeon, and then the Girl of the Limberlost. All right, so that is what she will have for language. So I just showed you all that she'll have, math, language, science, and history. Okay, now my youngest, for her math, she will be continuing with teaching textbooks and she'll be doing pre-algebra. And she's doing great with teaching textbooks. Um, she's been doing it since level four, I believe. Um, she's been doing great with it. Uh, it was not a good fit for my oldest last year. We tried it for the first time with her. It was it was a nightmare. Um, but for my youngest, it's it's so far <laughs> it hasn't been a problem at all with her. Um, okay. Now for her language, she will be doing. The Good and Beautiful um, Level 7, so this is the workbook, and this is the course companion, and then she'll have um, the reader, and then she has these grammar and, uh, sorry, geography and grammar grammar cards. Um, I did a video on this as well mm, a couple years ago, maybe, so if you're interested in seeing inside of this, you can look at that video. Okay, so for her science, she's going to be doing um, easy peasy um, zoology for her science, and she'll be doing the fifth through eighth grade level, and she's been doing, she's done like 20 something lessons in it already, and she likes it, but as of right now, I mean it may, it may change as the year goes on, but as of right now, I think it's too easy for her. Um, it's it's very basic and just too easy right now. Now like I said, it may get harder and I'm sure it will because the rest of Easy Peasy does. So I'm sure it would get harder. But in case it doesn't, <laughs> I went ahead and I, I got this book to supplement it. Um, this is The World Around Us or Around You. And it says, A Look at Nature from the Tropics to the Tundra. It's written by Gary Parker. And um, so this book is kind of about habitats. And then what she's doing on Easy Peasy is zoology. So I'm calling her course Zoology and Habitats. So, and I think that, that they will complement each other rather well. Like the last couple lessons she has done, she has learned about... Um, uh, the tundra and tegra i don't know if i'm saying that right you know and this one covers the tundra so anyway so she, this is just an extra uh ch short chapter book she'll just read and answer questions and just kind of you know do what it says um it's also from a christian worldview as well okay okay and the history you know i showed that at the beginning so I think that that is all for their school. Um, I'll be using my same planner that I've been using for the last few years that I made, a wholesome plan for a living education. So I've already been using that.
guess that's all I have for now. Um, but okay. Well, thanks and have a good day. Bye.